James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, August the 30th, Ooh. 2014. Yes, yes, it is Labor Day weekend 2014. The official end of summer. Now, now, the unofficial end of summer, because the end of summer is the day before the beginning of autumn, which is, the, I believe, they call it the vernal equinox. No, that's... That's spring, guys. No, it's fall. It's fall also. The vernal is spring. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's also ragweed season. No, uh, I have an old friend. Her first name is Vern, and she was uh, named because she was born on the day of the vernal equinox. Uh, I might as well say hello to her that I brought her name up. Greetings, Vern. And she was uh, born on the vernal equinox, which happens to be the end of September. As far as I know, first day vernal, of autumn. The vernal equinox. Yes, that too. Is when yes. you spin the egg around, and the egg stands up or whatever, and it's springtime. What okay. if you spin something else around? I thought the autumn. And it stands up also. Well, I don't know if you spin it this fan. No, you Maybe can't if spin. you stroke it a bit. <laughs> I know. Anyway... With some good thoughts. Anyway, to, um, to make you understand the importance of Labor Day, besides another excuse to get drunk and party and barbecue, uh, if it wasn't for the, uh, the labor laws and the blood, sweat, and tears of the labor unions and, and the labor... Uh, um, uh, the people involved in in pushing for labor laws that you Americans rightfully deserve. If it wasn't for all that, you wouldn't have this three-day long holiday weekend with any weekend, with any, I'm sorry, with any holiday that happens to fall on a Monday. You, you wouldn't have this three-day days off for the whole weekend, the three-day three Three days off, holiday weekend. Because Americans don't deserve it. They're too damn lazy. Well, according to Republicans, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, aren't they right on every subject? No, fuck them. I'm, I'm not going to oh, kowtow geez. to Republicans. They want their ideologies put into the I don't law. care. You prove it to me. Prove must it. Be right. No, prove it. Well, that they can't do. They never prove it. No. And and. Um, of course, if you want to be a part of the Fox News team, you just have to go to imbecile school. <laughs> you don't have to prove anything. You don't even have to sound intelligent. You just have to go to Numsco Imbecile, the Three Stooges School of Imbecilism or yeah. Numskullism. With all the problems we have around the world and et cetera, et cetera, they were complaining about Barack Obama's suit. His tan suit that he had on the other day. He looked pretty good, his, man. At his press conference. That tan suit got rave re reviews, great reviews. Not on Fox News. Forget it. James P. Madonna, yours truly, says he looked great in that. <laughs> I don't care what any of those those uh, fruit booties have to say out in Hollywood. Take it from me. He looked great in that suit. Greetings. President Barack Obama for uh, having uh, outstanding taste in fashion. Uh -huh. And I also would like to say hello to my near, dear, very close friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And I would like to say hello to uh, uh, the, the premier alternative fitness trainer, uh, Rick Brown of Southern California, along with uh, Eric Doyle his uh, business partner in crime, Eric Doyle, and Melody Schoenfeld. They are, collectively, they make up steel, stone, and sugar, and they are right now uh, doing a seminar in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Have fun. Of course, I would like to say hello sincerely to uh, my good friend, Mr. Mario Petrus, the trainer to the stars, 
and uh, one of the finest trainer and nutritional consultants uh, on God's green earth, in my opinion, along with me, of course. Uh, hello, Mario Petrus. And I would like to also say hello, uh, hello. to uh, my friend, Mr. Ken Thiessen, the Thiessenator, uh, former WWE pro wrestler back in the early 2000s, now resides and trains clients in Boca Raton, Florida. Hello, Mr. Ken Thiessen. I believe he was called Rocco Cipriano when he was in the WWE. So, uh, uh, anyway, I haven't communicated with him in a very, very long time, and uh, we just got back together in communication. Let me see. Um, oh, I wish from the bottom of our hearts here in Newsletter Sensor and the Mega Life 21, I, I, we all wish uh, comedian Joan Rivers a good recovery. I don't know about Speedy. You know, that's a, that might be asking for a lot, but we hope, we mm -hmm. wish you a positive recovery from your cardiac arrest. And uh, she's definitely one of my favorites. You know, and she's like the female Don Rickles. Uh, she tells it like it is. And there's not too many people, aside from the late great George Carlin, that told it, but that tell it and told it like it is. A very rare bird, Joan Rivers is, and uh, you know, and she she pretty much expresses what a lot of people feel, but are too afraid to express. And that's the uniqueness of Joan Rivers. All right, despite the fact, whether or not you're offended or not, I don't care. It's not my concern. You know. You got, this is it, the truth is the truth, and that's what we deal with here at Mega Life 21 and uh, Newsletter Censor. Now, I would like to formally introduce and pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth, Starship, the Starship Newsletter Censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good evening. On Memorial... Memorial? Blah, 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 blah. Labor Day weekend. On Labor Day weekend, 2014. How you doing? How the hell are you? Hey. How the hell are you? Eh. Uh, excuse me. Ain't that what you're talking about? Eh? Eh? That means eh. you're hanging in there. Eh? You know, I told, every time I tell somebody I'm hanging in there, uh, some of them say, Oh, you're only hanging in there? Oh, no, I'm on top of the world. Yes, we are. Oh, I just won the, 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 the power, the I just is. won the Powerball lottery. I, I'm Ooh. happy as a pig and shit. Oh, come on. What do they want you to, to say when they say, how how have you been? They want you to lie and be phony about it? Well, we should love the way the world is. It's the best of all worlds. You mean like Barney the Dinosaur? I uh, love you. You, you love, love me. me. We all go and piss behind a tree. Yeah. The uh, the sycophant uh, human centipede, if you ever seen the human centipede cartoon. Wow. <coughs> <coughs> Well, it's not the most pleasant image cartoon to look at, but it pretty much uh, represents the sycophants that sickeningly um, blow sunshine up everyone's ass and cannot deal with the real cold, hard facts of life. You know, and uh, they live, uh, they see the world uh, through uh, rose-colored glasses. Mm -hmm. They they think they're living in the land of uh, they Oz. They did a lot of that back in Reagan's day. A lot of the a lot of the old flower children of the '60s are like that. Oh, they don't want to hear a discouraging word. Oh, negativity, negativity. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're 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 what you're saying is toxic. It's negative. Hey, what do you want to do? You want to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich? A lot of those people hippies from the '60s. <laughs> are now conservative. Then who are these people online that do, do not want to hear anything negative at all? This, these suck-ups. Who, what, well, what is this like? Well, these are Pollyannas, I guess. 
You know what I mean? They are people who, they know there's problems in the world, they know they can't fix them, so why do, why worry about them? They know they can't fix them? Yeah. It's in their mind. Yeah, well, they can't fix them. Well, if they, if they stop voting for the two-party system... Bingo! That and the, would and help. the system has changed like it that should be. That would help, wouldn't it? Because we do have to change the system. That would help. Speaking about the system... Yeah. Guess what has made a comeback? Uh... Um, the Ebola virus? <laughs> Pink slime! Oh, it's back, baby. Jamie, uh, Chef Jamie Oliver did uh, some nice videos about pink slime and fast food, you know, like McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Excellent videos, Jamie Oliver. I mean, I got to salute Jamie Oliver, my lucky Blackthorn Irish shillelagh. Yeah, excellent. And pink slime, for those of you that are not familiar with it, it is the cheap way out of making you a hamburger. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it, it consists of God knows what. Uh, meat byproducts, roadkill. Blech. Once you pate uh, animal protein, you don't know what the hell it is, mm. and they put ammonia in it to, you know, clean it up to s conveniently, for your benefit, sterilize Blech. it. Then you ingest the garbage food Blech. and the ammonia, and you pay a premium price when you go to the fast food restaurant. Um, I um, met one occasionally uh, I, I'll meet uh, with uh, our voiceover artist William H. Moore the third at a local McDonald's for coffee Ooh. I don't eat there and lo and behold I, I see a lot of suits in there a lot of people in suits and ties well this all the big shots from McDonald's were there training uh, upcoming uh, uh, corporate ass-kissing managers you know managers in training trying to teach them the corporate way I never in my life bit my tongue so hard because <clears throat> I know they would freak out if I walked up to them and told them people should be ashamed of yourself mm. but I had to really bite my tongue really hard um, you know of course William Morrow still has an admiration for the for the corporate scene because his dad was a a big, a high had a high position in IBM, and but he, but he's more progressive now than he ever was before. But anyway, aside from that, I had to really bite my tongue pretty hard, man, because of pink slime is what they use to make the McDonald's hamburger. Mm-hmm. Well, it's back, big time. And but I'm, sales are up. Sales are up. Yeah. But uh, do the not back to what it was before. But do the people know it's pink slime? Uh, no, because that one company that was selling it uh, actually closed up. Oh, you mean for the, a while? You mean the manufacturer of yeah, pink slime burgers to make uh, to let the thing go by. See, that's what that's what bad people do in this country. Well, they, when they get caught at something, do something wrong or something, they get a little PR out there and then they, they either change their name <clears throat> or they go out of business for a little while and then they're back. See, pink because the pe because the people's memory is so small. You know what I mean? They forget very easily. Very quickly. Well, um, pink slime is probably the same as the hot dog uh, filler or hot dog material except it doesn't have the spices that they put in hot dogs that make them taste the way they do but I've seen it come out of the machine and it's just creamy pate God knows what you know and the government of course our wonderful FDA and USDA that, that the, the average numbskull in America just looks up to Oh, they care about our health. Yeah, my my ass. Uh, you know, they just uh, get paid off, and they allow things to happen with a blind eye. Uh, I want to salute Deutschland, the country of Deutschland. Ger Germany has right. You got it, brother. Germany has just banned fracking. They've told the companies that frack to simply go frack themselves. 
<laughs> the levity belt. All right, now. <laughs> and, uh... That's basically it. Um... Um... That's all? Well, uh, uh no more, no board. more talk of, uh, Martin the Bulldog Drummond. Uh, progressive of Kentucky because Kentucky. he quit. He quit us. He quit the groups. Oh, wh oh, why? Because he had a furious debate and argument with right-wing troll uh, Mike uh, Mazurka of our group, uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth group, and he self-destructed mm -hmm. and he quit because the man kept on taunting him and debating him. And uh, Martin Drummond likes to have the last word. He is a bit of a know-it-all. Uh -huh. He needs to have the last word. And Mike kept on going at him. And he just freaked out. And he couldn't take the heat. So he got out of the kitchen. And, you know, all I could say is don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way up. And that goes for corporations that don't like the progressive tax system. I don't want to pay any taxes. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. You mean like Burger King? Many of them. Uh, well, many of course, of many of them. Sixty percent, I believe. The worst thing is that that uh, welfare for the rich subsidies are made up of the tax dollars of America as a whole, including the middle class, and. Uh, but they have a fit when it comes to things like uh, food stamps, helping the poor, a few crumbs here, a few crumbs there, um, social security, you know, the, the Koch brothers, the Republicans, they have a fit when it comes to providing any money for the middle class and the poor, but it's okay to give trillions of free money, corporate welfare, to the fat cats that uh, contribute to their campaigns. It's, it's okay to give Exxon Mobil, who I believe made $323 billion mm -hmm. last year, it's okay to give them a $600 million tax back. Right. You see, that's, that's the Washington consensus. Everything that Washington does must be for those who already have well, the job creators in China. Yeah, the class. Yeah, the class warfare has always been around, always, and and, and it's the uh, the haves that always wage class war on the have-nots. It's not the other way around, like Republicans like to make you think. Yeah. I would like to also say greetings to my good friend in Varanasi, India, uh, expert. Uh, Jory uh, Club Swinger and May Swinger, Mr. Um, uh, Gyan Shankal Singh, Gyan Shankal Singh, and I would mm -hmm. like to also say hello to uh, my good friend uh, Paul Terrace Wolkowinski of the uh, Indian Club World Tour 2014. He is now in London, England, uh -huh. and he has a few more countries left to go to. He, he already went to India and Iran, now he is in England. And I think the next stop for him is uh, Denmark, Poland, Finland, and France mm -hmm. is his last stop. So greetings to Paul uh, Wolkowinski. And uh, let's see, oh, Mr. Joe Stebbins, uh, fifth degree black belt in ninju ninjutsu, uh, my good friend and progress progressive soldier extraordinaire on the group, Mr. Joseph Stebbins, uh, greetings to you. Anyway, I am done. So, if you want to sink your teeth into these readings, you can do it now. Let's see how we're doing on time this Labor Day weekend. Plenty of time. 2014, we got plenty of plenty time, of time. To, to sink our teeth. Uh, let's start with something a little <clears throat> cute. Yeah, rest my throat because this ragweed season, my throat is a bit irritated. As a result of the proactive residence, police began surveillance at the small, pale blue house on August the 8th. 
they saw numerous cars parked in front of the house with men ages 20 to 50 going in and out. So, bordello. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. On Wednesday. It's a whorehouse. Paramus police. Paramus, this is, we're talking New Jersey here. And members of the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office posed as Johns. Yeah, it's funny how they gave them the nickname Johns, you know. I'm sure their rates are higher because they're in a hoity-toity uh, part of, uh, of New Jersey. They entered the <coughs> home and were offered sexual acts at a rate of $160 an hour. Oh, okay. That's not an exorbitant. In other words, they, they didn't offer a therapeutic massage? massage? No. no. This was in These were straightforward, I guess. Was this in an office or a home? A home. What stupid asses. You're in a residential area. A pale area. blue house. You're in a residential area. And there's, uh, knowing Paramus, there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, retired people, older folk with money that choose not to go to Florida to live. And uh, I know because when Paramus is famous for retail stores and shopping malls, and when I drive through it, I get always these seniors in front of me going like uh, 30 miles an hour on the damn highway. So, you know, you got residential area with, with regular folk noticing young men getting out of their cars, going into the same house, leaving, more men coming with smiles in. on their face with smiles, on, with their smiles faces. on their faces men uh, not just young men what am i saying men, 20 to 50. men in general coming and going constantly every day no wonder somebody ratted on them may z zang 37 of nanuet new york has been charged with promoting prostitution and hindering apprehension is it uh, uh asian it was run by uh, Chinese or Koreans. Fang Ku Liu, 26 of Paramus, was charged with prostitution, a disorderly person's offense. Disorderly? Yeah. <laughs> Zai Zhang was sent to the Bergen County Jail. But it's behind closed doors. What do you mean disorderly behavior? It's not in public. On a twenty-five thousand dollar bail, with oh, for God's the sakes. option to pay ten percent. Let me tell you something. New Jersey, um, well, yeah, New Jersey in general. It's a, prostitution is is illegal, uh, like it is in the red states, except for the very intelligent state of Nevada, ah. where it's legal. You know, it's a, the health department has to give them the certificate of uh, authenticity, <laughs> you know, the certificate of cleanliness. of cleanliness, and they have to keep renew it periodically. And that's how it should be. But, you know, they still have this uh, puritanical uh, right wing zealot, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, mixing church and state Yes, remember that. Which is, this is worse than the marijuana uh, controversy. This is like what a woman does with her body in her private life. Laws involving prostitution, abortion, these are religious laws that have snuck in right. to our secular law. But it's their religious laws. It's of, the from their cult religion. That's correct. Not the religion of all of America. Not, not, uh, not the fact that many of taxpayers are atheists or Hindus or Muslims or um, Buddhists or but, whatever. But the fact is, we are a secular country, and they have no business putting religious laws into our secular sector. And our fi our, our founding fathers stated that more than once. That's correct. Because when you do that, you got. Well, we're looking at ISIS over there, aren't we? Perfect example. Perfect example. They're right-wing extremists. Exactly. To say the least. Very extreme. Kun Lu was released. Both were arrested without incident. It's all poppycock. 
Authorities believe the brothel had been open about two months. I hope they put a red light bulb in the front porch. <laughs> and they have no way, no way to tell how many clients there were. So that many, huh? Business was booming. Although they did find advertisements for the service on social media. With one saying, hot Asian, waiting for you, grand opening. Well, I'm sure that wasn't in the local paper, the local shopper, Paramus. Social media. Social media. Facebook. Maybe back page. Twitter. Back page. Back page. Craigslist. No, no they don't allow uh, any adults. Well, they don't know it from that. Hot Asian. Of course they know it from that. They can assume that, but they don't know that. Hot Asian waiting for you. What? Wouldn't uh, that kind of thing would be on maybe one of those? Uh, the Bergen, the Bergen Record still has an adult section in the classifies. I think that kind of greeting would be on something like, uh, "Do you want to marry an Asian?" Not, not the word. How about hot. a nice one from Russia? They don't use the word hot. The word hot refers hot, to hot, sex, hot, sexual, hot. arousing, arousal. Maybe. Like Ruth, Maybe Ruth Westheimer used to say, arousal. Maybe it means fuego. Te temperature? Yeah. Temperature-wise? Right. In other words, they turn the air conditioning off and she's all sweaty and warm and then yeah. you come in well, that's, a hot that's, Asian. That's a little hot for me. A horny joker. Michelle Martinez. She's the madam? 25, lives next door. Oh. Okay, why she wanted a job there? <laughs> With her family. She said she did not know <laughs> Zai Zhang or Kun Lu. None of the neighbors interviewed Thursday said they did. She didn't know. But notice that they moved in about two months ago. She stated she didn't know. You've got a thousand and one dudes parking, going inside for an hour or so, or half hour, hour leaving, and more dudes coming, same thing, all day, every day. She didn't know? Bullshit. It was Martinez Bullshit. and her family, as well as other residents on the street, who started to notice something was amiss. <laughs> oh, you, man. You could see multiple people coming in and out, said Martinez who works as a police dispatcher for Glenlock. <laughs> Wait a minute. She works for law enforcement and she did not, it did not ring a bell of what was going on next door? No. Oh man. How do you know that many people if you're new in town? Uh. Some Fairview Avenue residents interviewed on Thursday said that suspicious behavior along that busy main road, a largely residential street of middle-class homes with easy access to Routes 4 and Route 17, is not new. A brothel down the road was busted in 2005. And that house has since been knocked down. In the early 2000s, authorities arrested three people for prostitution out of an office building on Fairview Terrace. Well, that's when they, they advertise as a, as a therapeutic massage center. They'll, they'll rent. Often they do that. They don't just come out and mention sex. You know, they, they, well, I don't assume they would. You know. Teresa Halliday, 76, lives several doors down from the alleged brothel. Halliday and her daughter, 54-year-old Frances Halliday Cornell, said that for the past couple of weeks they have noticed cars pulling into their driveway, shutting off their lights, turning around and heading toward the home. The pair said the frequency of cars, especially in the evening and at night, 
was enough for them to notice that something might be going on. Miss Martinez did not suspect anything at first, right? We didn't know what was going on until we read it this morning in the paper. Uh. Now they said there have been several prostitution busts in the area since she moved in in 1958 when the neighborhood was still largely farmland. But she has no idea why the area attracts so much activity aside from its proximity to the two major highways. Clients can jump on them and run away, she said. Well, not if the place is being raided. How are they going to get dressed and leave that quickly? Yeah, well, they usually don't bother the Johns. You know, except for like, uh, who was it that started there? Was it Giuliani in New York to start putting their names in the paper? To embarrass them. To embarrass them. And then if they happen to be married men, it yeah, would, it yeah. would cause... Um, cause a problem in a marriage. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a, like a like a um, like the Inquisition. You know, yeah, in other words, by the sport. you're forcing your beliefs, your bel religious beliefs, on other people. You're shoving it down their throat. You say. As far as I'm concerned, it's a victimless crime. Uh, women have a right to choose women's well, I rights. Call it a crime. They have a. It's not a crime. It's it's well. it's stupid. It's 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 based on on cultist religious beliefs. It's uh. You know, it's a woman's right to choose yeah. what, what she wants to do with her body. That's great. You know, and, 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 and a way. fertilized egg is not a human being, by the way, or neither is an embryo that breathes like a fish. But Mr. Perry at Airy, Texas, he wants to shut down all abortion clinics. Perry has uh, got a problem. Rick yeah. Perry's got a... He's a crook. ...problem, yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot but of he's still running for president. And many Texans are embarrassed by him. Yeah, in Austin, that's about it. They're starting to get embarrassed by the imbecile Rick Perry. The rest of them like him. The imbecile. You see his, uh, the imbeciles. You see his mug shot? Ah, smiling away hey, in his mug shot. Well, huh? look, look at them. Um, they, they like that. Um, what the hell was his name? Uh, running for something in Tennessee. Um, in other words, I've seen videos of politicians that were totally, obviously hateful, bigots, and racist, and the people just clap for them. Yeah. Down there. Yeah. You know, they're not shy they're still about... they fighting the Civil War, man. They're, right. Did you see that okay. comparison uh, poster, banner I posted, where it shows... Uh, the Civil War map of the Confederate States yes. and then it shows the red states of today yes. and it's almost identical. Yes. Yes. So that means, that's what, what Dr. Bill said, is right. Yeah. The red states are still fighting the Civil War. They want to go back. You know? They haven't changed. That's what right. did my grandmother used to say in Italian? Uh, uh, a wolf may lose his hair, but not his habits. Nice. But she said it in Italian, but that's that's what it is translated. Right. Uh, continuing with New Jersey. Ah, Balloon Boy. We have a representative here named Scott Garrett. Is he a Democrat? No! He's a, cock, he's a cocksucker, coke. K-O-C-H, cocksucker. Scott Garrett's recent insult on Facebook of every decent, brave, and loyal American serviceman and woman has left me speechless. Good, I'll post something on his page, something progressive. I'll, I'll get under his skin. Garrett posted an ad asking people to like my page to learn what I'm doing to support veterans' benefits. Another hypocrite. Accompanied by a photo of a Russian military veteran with a chest full of communist medals. Yeah, probably 
World War II. I, this is the letter writer, am a Marine Corps veteran of Vietnam, and until a few years ago, a lifelong Republican. I continue to be outraged by Garrett's phony concern for veterans and military families. Phony's right. But then again, all Republicans are phony. How does he justify cutting the very food stamps? Many of our servicemen and service women and their families depend on just to survive. Yeah. That is a shame, isn't it? The men and women who may sacrifice their lives supposedly for our freedom and limb and limbs for our fo oh yeah supposedly have to be for our freedom on food stamps what the hell the oh during the Iraq war all those private contractors over there were making thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars compared to our servicemen and women who got chump change, chicken, That's chicken feed. For putting their lives on the line. Listen, uh, our freedom was not in jeopardy because our borders have not been threatened in many decades. You know, probably World War II was the last time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's for it's war profiteering. That's for true. oil. That's true. For oil and for the companies that make weapons and Halliburton and those other companies you know but uh, to get to to deny any poor person in America especially veterans food stamps food stamps is mere crumbs compared to the rich getting free money yeah but my point is that there should be no uh, veterans in America living on food stamps there should be no person in America Listen. living on food stamps. Okay? Veterans should be at the top of the waiting list for everything that's good. Any social program that helps people. As far as I'm concerned, the veterans should be at the Why top of the waiting list. Why would they need list. a social program if they got paid properly? They're, but they're not. That's my point. The cops that are going around abusing people and, and shooting young black men in cold blood and murdering them and beating up the homeless and beating up women and, and tasing little girls. These cops get paid way more money than our service veterans. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. Well, don't think about it too much because you might, you might uh, actually uh, get out of your goddamn seat and do something. Well, definitely, definitely vote. I don't care what you do when you get to the polls, but 100% of America should vote. I don't care if you're disabled, whatever. If you're poor, destitute, wealthy, middle class, vote. Vote. Well, it's I your saw... business. Your business how you want to vote, but. You know, I have no faith in the two-party system at That's all. That's correct. I saw a video the other day on Facebook. You'll Mr. See. Rocky Anderson. You'll see more. As a new party. Rocky Revolution. That's a party? That's his new party. Why is he creating? Why can't he just run as a... He can't. As an independent. Well, that is the independent. You mean a political... Rocky Revolution. A political party... Or, or his organization is called Rocky Revolution. That's it. It's party. You keep on saying party. It's an actual party? When you put it on the ballot, it is a party. Okay. All right. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. When I ran for president in 1980... Never heard him speak, by the way. Speaks Rock, very well. Rocky Anderson. I, I had the Constitutional Values Party. That's right. Okay. Now, if I would have found my way onto the ballot, that party would have been there. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay? As I knew, independent party. Right. That 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 still exists with with when you with, with you when you run. Well, if I do it, but I ain't running and and besides, you know, that was nineteen eighty. Right. And you and you this ran like 
Three times total? Two. Two times total, okay. With the two? No, it's three. It was three. Three times total. Three times! <clears throat> You're out. Yeah. Now, right? now uh, it is true that libertarians tend to be different from one another. You have liberal, you know, progressive libertarians like Jesse Ventura, and then you have right-wing libertarians like, I guess, uh, Ron Paul. You know, or you know, Lyndon LaRouche, right? He's oh a, my God! He's a right-wing libertarian. -ish I don't know what the hell Lyndon LaRouche is. Okay, can't pin the guy down. He hates everybody. Yeah, but uh, you know, well, I, I mentioned Ron Paul before. Yeah, he sounds like he wants a consumption tax, like uh, many Republicans do. No Federal Reserve and no IRS. Because that takes the onus off those who have. Just like under Reagan, that's what happened under Reagan! They want to... Mean well, the, people forget this constantly. The, the, that's what Reagan did. He spread it. The greedy bastards just don't want to pay taxes. They pinch a penny so hard, both heads and tails are on the same side. Yeah. I heard that on the honeymooners. Wonderful. Okay, finish up that reading there. Anyway, back to Garrett. He doesn't. 103.6 million was spent in military commissaries by low-income military families mm -hmm. and veterans in 2013, but Garrett has repeatedly voted to cut their food stamps. He's a damn hypocrite. He's a typical... He's an evil bastard. New Jersey is a very... Politically, New Jersey has always been a very sleazy state. Politically. Uh, New York used to be, but New York is uh, is on, on a good track right now, I think. they got good people in office. Well, yeah, that's that, what it takes, don't yeah, you? They got good don't people blame the office. government. Blame the people who are running it. Right. It's blame just, Mr. Barack Obama when he uh, 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 gets a USDA uh, uh, whatever commissioner to come in. And he's from big business. Corporatist. Or Hillary Clinton supports Monsanto. Yeah. Uh, and Bill Clinton uh, uh, got rid of Glass-Steagall when he was in office. Yeah. These are corporatist Democrats, but when they run, they run like liberals. I feel your pain. They feel our pain. They run as liberals until they get elected. Yeah. Uh, you see, Scandinavian, Scandinavian countries, t to me, they, they set the standard. They, they took an honest democracy, honest capitalism, and they modified it and tweaked it and made it into a very, very fair system for all. And, you know, I salute the Scandinavian countries. I think they are the standards that um, should lead the world. The standard to go by. Because they're doing many things right. And, they, and, they, and it's proven that they're doing it right. And he has even advocated more extreme and deeper cuts than most colleagues in his own party. Wow. Unemployment among military veterans and their families is higher than in the civil civilian population. Currently 30% among military spouses. But Garrett opposed tax credits for companies hiring Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. And he has not supported President Obama's Veterans Job Corps proposal. Hire the vet. That's what I say this Labor Day weekend. Hire the vet. There is a backlog of veterans' claims. Not the wacky vets that did bad things over there. The honest vet. You know, the, the normal vet. Not the ones that go shooting up innocent women and children just for the fun of it. There is a backlog of veterans claims that hiring 94 additional claims processors 
would have addressed. Once again, Garrett voted no! He sounds like the Republican Congress. He's voting no to everything that's good. He's a good Republican! In other words, he just doesn't care about the little guy. Bingo! In other words, he would allow... But wait a minute, let's go back okay. to the letter here. Yeah. What did it say? He took a photo of a Russian military veteran with a chest full of communist medals. And what is, what's his point? The point is what, what Mr. G.W. Bush did. Photo watch? Mission accomplished. Which Reagan did. Yeah. Constantly pictures of him with the military. Just like, just like uh, uh, Baptist uh, evangelist uh, uh, Pastor John Hagee, he wants, they want to let the poor starve to death. They don't care. Almost one third of all homeless people in America are veterans. One third. That's a shame. Forty-five percent suffer from mental illness. Oh boy. The incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder and suicide rates among veterans is climbing alarmingly. And you would think when you come back from a war that your country would be proud of you and, and take care of you, your needs, and, and, and you, would, you would live a peaceful life for the rest of your life, not having to really worry too much. Nah. You would think that after you, if you fought in a war, right? Let's get the money to Halliburton. Okay? Well, capitalism has shown their true colors. But how many people have gotten the message? Because Americans are brain cell deficient. <laughs> That's why. We got a lot of uh, Michelle Bachmans and Sarah Palins walking around. And Rick Perry's. Instead of finding solutions to these problems, Garrett has been busy playing politics. This past May, he even voted to allow airlines to continue to charge a bagging fee to our men and women returning home from combat. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And despicable. Garrett is no friend of the United States veteran. And this is one vote he will not be getting in November. So one person saw the light, but how many others? Ugh. We had an incident here in New Jersey mm -hmm. a few days ago or whatever. Some person was starving two dogs. You know, this. I don't understand it. The, the, the cruelty to animals that, that's becoming so popular nowadays, it's uh, in a sociopathic way, not, not showing remorse or compassion or anything. You know, it's just a heartless. They're not humans. They're, like, like William Morrow says, they're demons. They're not humans. Anyway, those dogs, they were dumped in a park, a local park. Sadly, one of the starving dogs rescued from Eastside Park in Patterson, New Jersey, oh boy, on August the 25th, has died. Eastside Park. It's a ghetto park in the ghetto part of Patterson. Bugsy had neurological problems. That compounded with the fact that he didn't get proper veterinary care and nutrition led to his deterioration. The heartbreaking decision was made that he be humanely euthanized. Yeah. I'd like to say the concern and outpouring of love from all across our state and country has been appreciated beyond measure. A personal thank you to Marge Kane of Save the Animals Rescue Team for putting up the $5,000 reward for the arrest and conviction of the perpetrator. I, I think 
we, we need stronger animal rights, and I think perpetrators should get a more severe punishment than they it's get now. It's only recently that they're getting any kind of punishment. Yeah, right. I, I see photos that are heartbreaking, like, all the time online about the, the results of animal cruelty by humans, you know. Um, if you don't, if you're not willing to research an animal and and take the responsibility for that animal, you should not have a pet. Don't get the pet until you you decide that you really want it and that you are going to be the only owner of it and you're going to take care of it and supply its needs. Otherwise, don't get it. Same thing with being a parent. You know, with sometimes, well, with the parent thing, most often it's an accident when you knock somebody up, but I mean, a lot of times it is. But you know, but not, not a pet is your is, is your 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 conscious choice. But it's also a conscious choice to starve it. Yes, it's premeditated crime. That's not correct. As far as I'm concerned, it's premeditated. That's correct. Excuse, continue. I have to go to the men's room. Oh. Normally I don't do this, but I guess I'm so excited with this this rip roaring uh, Labor Day weekend uh, special show. Oh, I thought Mr. Garrett had your dander up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm furious. That's Scott Garrett, right? Yeah. As well as to Stephanie Pearl of Second Chance Pet Adoption for taking these two starving dogs to the amazing staff and director at the Animal Clinic of Mars Plains. The reporters from across our state deserve acknowledgement for their excellent coverage of this blatant act of animal cruelty. It is with their help that I'm positive we will bring the perpetrators to justice. This was a totally unnecessary and preventable circumstance. There are many, many rescue groups in New Jersey that would have gladly taken in these two dogs. If anyone has any information about this case, please don't hesitate to call 973-881-3640. We will find out who did this. We will prosecute <clears throat> to the fullest extent of the law. Yes. Yes. Definitely, and definitely. One more uh, little letter concerning okay. that issue. Okay. How sad it is to read another article of abuse and neglect. There are so many organizations that will help individuals if they cannot take care of their pets. Bunny and Bugsy were tortured for six months. See, that's how long they've been starving. Six stinking months without any food. Their bodies had shut down. Their bodies couldn't even make use of food anymore. I'll tell you another story when you're done. We're happy to see there is a reward to find who did this to these beautiful animals. We hope whoever is responsible is brought to justice. We wish that individuals or individual a very unhappy and unsuccessful life. This was a terrible crime and they should pay for it. Well, it was a horrible story uh, of animal cruelty um, that I, I read about. Uh, state of Nevada, this it was this woman who had, um, I think she had um, a few chihuahuas um, and uh, she could for some reason she could no longer take care of them. So she found, eventually she found someone to adopt them, this man, and a little did she know that the man in a hotel room tortured the chihuahuas and decapitated them, yeah. and, and the maid found the chihuahuas decapitated in the hotel room and- uh, Refrigerated. And refrigerated too? All of them were just, I think just those two. Those two. And there's uh, three others or four yeah. others. But they found the, the man. They arrested the demon. The they demon arrested man. him. And uh, but I think the penalties 
which would be a lot more than they are now. Of course. With these uh, subhuman uh, demons, uh, entities that that really should be living under a rock. You know, troglodytes. I think troglodytes are, is probably too generous. Too good a term. Too good a term for them. <laughs> But anyway, time for your break, right? Uh, five minutes, and yeah. All right. So let me. All right. Unless it's, uh, unless it's hot already. I'll suck up the uh, five minutes with uh, my siphon. No, no pun intended. Everything you've learned, everything you've heard out there, people, about trickle-down economics is a lie. It's a conservative lie. Never was. Never was meant to work. What we have. Not trickle down economics. What we have is siphon up to the top 20% economics, the devil's economics. Siphon up economics, not trickle down. But this, of course, is a siphon. And by the way, the dollar store where I got a couple siphons, half right now has a big bin loaded with these. Oh, siphon! It's you an, know why? It's an aquarium siphon. Ah, uh, yeah. But it also it also can be used to siphon your gas tank. Yeah, but isn't it too far down? You know, the, you think this would reach the, the the bottom of the tank? I don't think so. It can be extended very simply. Siphon up. But to the, the fat price, cats economics. With the price of gas. Never trickle down, brother. You know? Never trickling down to you. Well, yeah, well, yeah, in other words, instead of somebody sucking on a hose and possibly getting gas in their mouth. Yeah. You know, uh, well, most cars have a lock cap, so you would have to bust the freaking thing to steal the gas. I don't know how easy that is, but hey. No. Anything can be done. Come on. You know what's a problem with car alarms? Is it's like the boy that cried wolf. They go off and so easily with with actually nobody nobody A cat could jump on a car. Maybe maybe somebody slams their car door real hard and uh -huh. it goes off. I never I, I see car alarms go off in parking lots where nobody touched the vehicle. Nobody was near the vehicle. And it happens so often that people are immune to it. They're desensitized yeah, to the car right, alarm. That's why I said, boy, they cried wolf. It's like, oh, there's another annoying car alarm. Uh, well, when is that person going to shut it off? And then nobody looks. Nobody looks out the window. Yep. You know. But anyway, it is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch. And uh, I will now join with uh, our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for our segment, my segment with him. And then followed by promo done by William H. Morrow, the third. And then we will return back to the balance of this uh, Labor Day weekend 2014 show. All right. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow, um, and um, it, I don't know about you, uh, you viewers, but me and William H. Morrow are not really in a great mood. But uh, I was at the uh, the supermarket in my um, town called Aldi's. Okay, uh, actually, right before uh, I, I I arrived to do the show with uh, Reverend Bill. I, I was at all these and um, at all these you have to you can bring your own bag or you have to buy a, one of their bags if you want a carriage a, a shopping cart you have to rent it put money in it because they're all locked I refuse to do either so I bring my bag and I my arms are loaded with groceries okay uh, food items. I get online and this 
hoity-toity, snooty-looking woman with big earrings. She uh, has her basket loaded with food. She proceeds to put her items on the, uh, on the belt, the conveyor belt, and she sees me standing there with my arms full. You think... Well, she thought because you drove a basket, she could put her stuff on. Yeah, so, so you think she has the common courtesy and consideration? Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, go ahead of me and put your, your items on the, on the belt. She has a load of items. She couldn't let me get ahead of her. And this disproves just how selfish and miserable me, people are getting. Me first attitude. Me first. <clears throat> me, me, me. So what I did is I went on another aisle. I said, you know what? Screw this. I mean, mm -hmm. I would have done it if I, if somebody had five or six items. Oh, I always let people go. I would have let them get five. And I kid with people. Yeah. I've had ladies in front of me saying, oh, I'm sorry for taking so long. I said, no. I said, that's okay. You take all the time you need. Hurry and up. And this, and this proves. You have fun with them. Just how miserably selfish and inconsiderate and people are, you, are getting. And what's your rush? Where do you really have to be where a few minutes is going to hurt you? And if, if that's the case, Not even why did you minutes. cut it that close then? Why you, know, did you, you know how much the, you know how much the uh, how long the cashier took to ring me up? Not even a minute. Oh. Not even a minute. So I took I would have taken a minute out of that woman's day. Well, Unbelievable. That would have destroyed her life, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <clears throat> now uh, uh, the gentleman that we uh, we tried to help uh, from Northern New Jersey, David, contacted me, and um, you know the one that had to apply for welfare and food stamps. And uh, he's the one that had um, the situation where his sister had to pay for his car insurance last year because obviously he didn't have the money. Not what lousy $140 a month he was getting from the state of New Jersey. So anyway, the, the problem that welfare had and the reason why they cut his money off is because instead of his sister paying for the insurance directly with the insurance company, she gave him money and he turns around and pays for it, so they consider that see, income. See, look, listen, you're nitpicking, not you, but government, you're nitpicking over his little petty dollars. If he embezzled millions, he'd have attorneys to probably get off. They're just sticking it to people, and I don't know why. They, they're, they're, it's like they're punishing the little guy. They're punishing the poor. They're keeping people down. Should there be an amendment or an addi additional couple of sentences to the Constitution? We the people. And, discri and prohibiting discrimination yeah. financially. Financial why do you, discrimination. Why do you want to keep holding people down? Because everything is about the damn bottom line today in America. The dollar side. People just care about money. They don't care about nothing else. It's, it's almost like a god. Like they're, Money is a god to a lot of people. They're worshipping Money them. is a god to a lot of people. So uh, They live for money no matter how old they get. You're 80 some odd years old. At that age, really, what are you going to do with all that money? You know, how many, honest, you know how many billions every year you know? the, uh, uh, the Republican Congress is giving taxpayers money, giving to corporations and the rich is free money that they don't have to pay back? That's insane. Meanwhile, well, you have people ripping off the system too, but people that are honest and just need a break are getting shafted. That's the sad one. The poor, the poor seem to be getting punished left and right. Yeah. And it's not. It's definitely not only is it not fair. It's inhuman. Well, uh, well, Jimmy, let's be honest. Now it's been out for quite a number of years. They know about it. Employed people, families who are employed and working that are homeless. That shouldn't be. It just shows with the pay. There are people with college education that are practically homeless or homeless. PhDs working in fast food restaurants. We're, I mean, what's going on here? Where's the imbalance yeah. and why? And why? Where's the American dream? Seriously, where is the American dream? Has it become, has it become an American nightmare? Hey, when I was with my wife you know? in, in, in the factories, there were there were immigrants with with college degrees and professions. Well, but because of their because of their accent, their heavy accents, mm -hmm. they had to lower themselves to work well, in a what, factory. What have I said to you when we've gone to McDonald's and other other places? When you're making minimum wage or maybe, if you're lucky, slightly above, but even $10, $12 an hour, at that rate, you should not be paying taxes. So really, when it comes to, say you're making minimum wage, $8.25, whatever, 
after taxes, the whole bit, blah, blah, blah. What are you really making per hour? Yeah. Can you live on that six, 633 or 575? That's unfair. That's wrong. They should not yeah. be taxed. A certain amount, under a certain level, you don't get taxed. And, and look at student loans. The bottom line. Look let, at student loans. Let's let people they, live a little bit. They let won't, them live. They won't let you live. They won't let you breathe. They suffocate you. They, well, they well, oppress you. you. You're not living. You're no. existing. Yeah. But you're not living. Living means enjoyment. Not just breathing whatever. Existence yeah. isn't is just breathing or the emotions of being being alive. That's existing. Living is enjoying things, raising whatever you want to do. Families, go out to clubs, have a good time. Go to a restaurant. A little yeah. bit of happiness, enjoyment in your life. We're not living per se too much. We're existing. Yeah. There's no surplus cash left <laughs> anymore. Disposable income, no. There's, there's no disposable income. Anymore. There's very little leisure time for uh, Americans to actually yeah. enjoy yeah. life and live life. So based on a tech Technicality. Poor David had his income is whopping one hundred and forty dollars a month has has ended. The f no food stamps, no nothing. Because why? Because his sister did not pay the auto insurance company directly. She gave the money to David, and he turned around and did it. And we were talking I'm about David. He put him in jail for that. Yeah, like that homeless man in Hackensack. Mm -hmm. uh, found yeah. he found eight hundred dollars. Uh, you didn't go by the rules. We're locking you up. And, and David also has a uh, social security disability case that's pending and they, they want, Welfare wants uh, a letter that, that shows proof that he has a pending case. So David says, why do I have to show a letter for a pending case? Because pending doesn't mean I'm receiving money from it. Pending means it's up in the air. And the caseworker says, "Well, you could perceive it, and you could th you could analyze it any way you want." This That's is, not right. That's she not says, right. "This is how we do things That's here." That's not right to answer somebody like that. So, Explain to them this. This is what we mean, sir. Right. They should have told this guy to call. They they, they don't work with people. They no. they butt heads with the people. Right. So then no. then David they they told David because you're um, you're applying all over again, but we closed your case and you opened up a new case. We want to see uh, another copy of your birth, uh, birth certificate. So, so David, this poor guy's got to do the whole thing right. over so, again. So David, David told the caseworker that he was told directly that they already have a copy of his birth certificate in his file. The, ca the caseworker says to David, well, there, your, your birth certificate might be in your file right now. I don't know, but I don't have the time to look for it. So, oh, whoa, 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 what's your job? Right. You don't have the time. What do you mean by that? Right. Then is, why is, are you working here? Is it that they don't have, she don't have the time? I don't have the time because I'm not important. Or she doesn't feel like looking for it. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with the birth certificate is not the birth certificate per se. It's the fact that they want to charge, uh, the city of Patterson wants to charge David um, $32. I mean, the state of New Jersey, I'm sorry, wants to charge David $32 to get another copy no, of his birth certificate. This is a scam. He doesn't right? have the money. They're scamming people. People that can't afford yeah. it, they're taking their money even more so. It's $25 plus $7 Does per really processing fee. Does it cost that much to what what mean process? What is a processing fee? What does process mean? Is that like an addition to shipping and handling? Yeah, what is processing? handling? What do you mean processing? It's done problem. We've got people that are paid hourly. So they're not getting extra money for processing this. They're still getting the same wage per hour. So right. what do you mean processing fee? It was just greed on their part, getting another way to, to scam more money yeah. away from the people. It's a, it's a fancy created word, process. It's like it's like with charities. They use the word yeah. administrative costs. Uh -huh. Yeah, what does that mean? All right, so your dollar, yeah. out of your dollar, 10 cents might go to the, ch uh, to yeah. the charity, right? Yeah. So the rest is administrative costs. What is administrative costs? I mean, right. specify. Uh, it's ridiculous. They don't, they don't, it's ridiculous. To me, it's a scam. And um, another gentleman by the name of Stephen contacted uh, me, and he, he wanted to talk to you also. Stephen, who is on collecting a, a disability, uh, he had his food. He had food stamps, but they they recently mysteriously cut him out of the system for no logical reason. Uh, he's getting disability. He's um, 
living in a studio apartment in northern New Jersey and Stevens um, has a breathing problem. Now, Stevens' electricity was recently cut off about a week ago by PSE&G of New Jersey. Uh, astronomical uh, electric bill, I think it's uh, $1,500, give or take. Uh, he, he does not use much electricity. He has no idea how it became $1,500. But it's been a week now and he has nothing. No air conditioning, it's hot, he has a breathing problem. No, no uh, refrigeration for his food, no nothing. They're absolutely heartless and he has to, instead of getting, he only gets like a, a hundred, almost $180 from the state to pay utilities. Uh, they call it the Lifeline program, I think. Uh, for a whole year. How are you gonna, how is that gonna supplement a poor person's utility bills for a whole year? How do you stretch 180 or 170 dollars out? Well, because the bottom line, too, if it's going to be that low of an amount, that small, then why even bother? Why bother? It's like giving some, you know, <coughs> somebody. It's like a, your uncle giving you two bucks and here, kid, go buy yourself something. Here's your dinner. There are three peas on the plate. You know, really, three it's, bean it's, salad. It's a small. Free so bean salad, like what happened to you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, they, they've got to do better. This is really ridiculous, yeah. so it's got to be changed. It, it, it's ridiculous. They, people, they have no compassion. It seems no. like, uh, William, it seems like throughout history, it's always been class warfare between the haves and the have-nots, and the haves started the class warfare, and the haves have, do not care what the have-nots, they're suffering, they're starving, and uh, it's always a constant punishment of the poor. And it, to me, it's a direct discrimination. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's sad. The bottom line is people are suffering, yeah. and that's sad. Yeah. And people should be enjoying life. And there's no empathy, and there's no compassion. No. It's, it's literally the haves versus the have-nots, uh, like Reverend Bill says, and there's no compassion, and they don't care. I think the system, the whole social services system, doesn't seem to be designed to, to really genuinely help people, to help the poor. No. It, 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 you know what it's like? It's like, look what I've done to get votes. It gives them a mere pittance, like yeah. I said earlier. Right. A mere little, it's, it's just not enough, I'm sorry. It's not enough. Just to get votes, I think they create these programs. Well, you know, and if you complain, they would say, we're sorry, we, we, we can't afford it. And fine, but come on and admit it. Yeah. Just say, look, yeah. you know, we're doing whatever we're doing. Right. We know it's not enough, but it's, no. it's nothing. It's not, absolutely, uh, basically nothing. Yeah. Now, now, David, uh, no, it's like it's, it's, uh, it has this, uh, a built-in mechanism for failure. Uh, uh, it's just not designed to, to, to succeed. They also, you know, told David that this $140 routine is way before Chris Christie became governor, so you can't really blame Christie no, for it. No, but who no. came up with that figure? And I said, you know, I mean, I mean, they told David, he says, you know, they got to get the money from somewhere. I says, yeah, well, how about taxing the rich? The rich are, many of them are not paying any taxes or very little. Yeah. You know, yeah. the middle class are the ones that are being taxed. Uh, it's just that. It's sad. Uh, yeah. And what about military uh, planes that never get used? The trillions get spent on on, uh, on planes that just sit there and collect dust. They don't make much of a mention when they set up a multi-billion-dollar rocket that poor thing malfunctions and blows up in the air. There, well, there goes two billion dollars. Yeah. I mean, you say it like it's nothing. It's a blurb on the news. It's a blurb. If it gets reported, how many blow-ups have we had that they don't tell us about too? Well, they're not, they're not updating the, the world on what's going on with Fukushima in Japan. There's still uh, you, radiation you know, going... A lot, of, a lot of stuff you've got, they want to keep quiet. There's you still radiation to. every day going into the Pacific well, Jimmy, Ocean. Jimmy, radiation doesn't go away in a matter of a few months or years. Yeah. Uh, I think it was uh, Chernobyl over in Russia. They said that nearby lake that's poisoned, contaminated with radioactivity, will be clean 
and safe to go into. Really? It's so contaminated within 487,000 years. You know what some... So radiation doesn't go away quickly, no. okay? You know what some American politicians said about that, that, that theory? They said, uh, the solution is dilution. The oceans will dilute it. Yeah, my foot. You no, keep they don't. They'll, they'll carry it with the currents. Right. They'll spread it. But if you're pouring uh, millions of gallons per day, which is what's happening. How could, at some point, the dilution factor is not going to work? Where did you get this from? It's, the Republican Party made that statement. No, I think no. I don't think the Republican Party can be that stupid. I think this one and, guy, and they, they don't. Might be that and stupid. they insist they don't believe in, in cl climate change, in uh, global warming. The, they don't believe the North Pole is uh, is melting because of oil companies putting fluorocarbons into the atmosphere. Oh, so what's next? You're going to tell me Rocky and Bullwinkle aren't real people? No. I mean, all I know is those polar bears are, are frantically looking for an ice sheet to, to climb on. And it's getting worse. It's getting away. If, if the, the, the GOP isn't worried, why are the world scientists worried? Scientists are worried. So why are they? But the GOP isn't. Because they're why getting paid off by big oil. Maybe. So it all comes out to, I don't care as long as I get mine. I get my... I get my money, I don't care. Yeah, I get my payoff. I will lie and tell non-truths. Yeah. As long as I get something to put yeah. in the bank or yeah. some accounts. Well, every month I see satellite images of the North Pole. And Antarctica, ice sheets, ice sheets are disappearing. When you've got chunks of ice falling off into the ocean way ahead of schedule and time that are bigger than some of our smaller states, smaller state or not, that's a huge chunk sea of ice. Sea levels are rising. That's huge. Our smaller states are big, if you think about it. You know, you know what happens okay. when the sea levels rise? All the coastal cities will, will eventually get flooded. Sure. Miami. Sure. Perfect. Doesn't yeah. take much. The keys? You can kiss them goodbye. Well, they say, they said all of South Florida will be underwater by a certain date. Yeah, well, it's so damn low already, so what are you going to do? Maybe in New York City and Manhattan yeah. it will look like Venice, Italy. Yeah, it's not no. good. No, not good at all. Go to the Palisades. Right, now, now what's the date tomorrow? Uh, to, to show? 27th. Okay, okay. It's 27th. Uh, well, actually, um, okay. 90 plus degrees when Labor Day weekend is almost here. Can you believe that? And if that is, if, if that, and then it, the weather is erratically changing. Well, you know how I feel about summer, it should be illegal. Yeah. Don't allow it. You got I think it. we're about done, right? I, I, is yeah. our time up? But, oh, I want to mention one more one thing. One more thing. The severe drought in America that's destroying the agriculture industry like mm -hmm. California and, and the worst drought in 400 years. Do you know that even though there's a, there's a, a, a unprecedented drought that's killing our agriculture, do you know that the CEO of Nestle's is draining the Colorado yeah, River yeah, to, yeah. to sell bottled water? Uh -huh. He's yeah. actually, he's, he's exploiting the, the crisis. Well, we said that last last week. We said turning it into cash in recent times. Now you're paying paying to put air in your car tires at gas stations. You're paying for air. Mm -hmm. I, What's next? You got to pay a fee when you ask the attendant how much he has to put in your car. Is it an asking fee? Where does this end? Oh yeah, an asking fee. Where does this end? That's like shipping and handling. Uh, that's like handling. Yeah, that's right. You spoke to me. That'll be two dollars. Yeah. Extra. Oh, by the way, it's it's when you order something from a uh, infomercial, it's always for easy payments. Mm -hmm. They're always they're easy. But wait, if you order now, if you're one of the first, whatever, ten hundred billion customers to call, we'll knock off one payment. It is a promo. <clears throat> you, you, That's you, right. You viewers are 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 are. Uh, in, in, but we're not through. <laughs> We'll also give you, hold on, an extra one free. Just basically separate your handling. Yeah. Say it real fast. The, the disclaimer. Uh, 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 Spin that real quick, which is probably two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, Limited. we're done for the day, yep. everybody. Yeah, watch till out. next time. Yes. Watch your backside and bye bye. Yeah. Don't forget. Don't forget. Limited. Limited supplies. Well, get them while they last. That's, that's when you order it and ask for the sale. They yeah, say, oh, yeah. we don't have any more. If you're the first 200 caller, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You're Mr. 201. <laughs> yes, that's what I get all the time. Yeah. All right, bye. No. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. 
The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much for a very hard-hitting, invigorating show. William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist. And uh, I was just discussing with uh, my uh, co-host here and mentor, uh, Dr. Bill, about uh, animal cruelty in connection with the raising of livestock in America. Uh, Gary No posted a video recently um, about the horrible environmental, you know, living conditions of dairy cows uh, sitting in, you know, standing in water and 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 sludge with their own fecal matter all, all just all over the place in large amounts, and there's no place to sit or sleep these cows because it's it's like a swamp it's it's wet muddy and loaded with their own fecal matter yeah. they can't lie down and um, then dr. Bill proceeded to tell me about another video where they immediately remove the calf from the mother cow as soon as it's born and the, the cow was following the truck after the, the people just through the calves in his truck and, and, the, the, and the mother cow was following the truck and uh, you know because the mother has to go go to work being milked immediately they can't lose heaven forbid they should lose one day of uh, of selling milk you know at least let the calf receive its colostrum for at least one day oh they can't do that yeah. But this is not just cows. This applies to cruelty with all livestock, animals, pigs, with chickens. It goes on and on and on. You know, uh, animal cruelty. So it's very sad what the human race has become, or should I say, what the human race in capitalism has become. The devil. The devil's economics. Uh -huh. So what are you saying? There's another way? There's another way? There's, there's a right way and a wrong way to do ah. everything. To do everything. Uh -huh. And it shouldn't be about political parties. It should be about doing the right thing. Yeah. You of know. course, we have the old friction. Hey. One party does the right thing for those who have, and the other party supposedly used to do the right thing for those who didn't have. Yeah, well, but today, especially after Mr. Clinton's time in office, both parties are corporatists. And if you're a corporatist, you are doing the right thing for the haves. Or the wrong thing for the haves. You know? For the haves? Yeah. I isn't it wrong to be giving to the haves all the time? No, no, no. The haves like that. So that's why but I'm calling it the right I'm thing. I'm not looking at it from the point of view it's of the It's the haves. wrong thing for the mainstream. Correct. For the little guy, and it's the wrong thing. who the majority of people are in the United States of America? Mainstream. Mainstream! Guess who the consumers are in America? Mainstream! mainstream. Mainstream. Guess who gets the kick in the ass? Mainstream. Thank you. And guess who uh, traditionally was the backbone of the American economy and also in providing jobs was Main Street, not Wall Street. The worker. 
provides wealth, not the corporation right. or what he sells. Well, he provides wealth for the shareholder right. and himself. Well, but the worker is the one who provides the wealth in the first place. Main Street represents small businesses, entrepreneurs, or mom and pop stores. Uh, uh, this was, uh, you know, at what one time was was the the, the backbone, the, the very foundation. Which provides something like seventy percent of the jobs in America. Yeah, they are part of the middle class. Maybe sometimes the upper middle class, but the small businesses are part of the middle class. When they're making moolah with their business. And the, the middle class should receive, small businesses should receive all the tax breaks, not the fat cats, not the corporations. If you're making profits, why do you even need tax breaks? Well, what I mean is if you're making, let's say, 250000 per year or more, so with a tax break, you'll make two sixty. You should be paying more taxes. Uh, well, okay. is that what you're saying? The more you make, the more you should pay. But what I'm saying is, the small businesses, the, the emerging growth companies, are usually middle class. They're considered middle class. Well, not when they're emerging, because then they have to go on their knees to a bank or to Wall Street. To get moolah. No, no, they're, they're, they're to still, enhance but the they're still within the middle <laughs> class. The middle class is determined by how much money you make. Okay, what do you think um, a small, the average a net profit of a small business is? You think it's. I don't know, but you're talking about something that's already established. I'm talking about something that wants to be established. Oh, you so mean it's not middle oh, class. Oh, you mean you mean somebody just starting out? That's correct. Like an entrepreneur. He's not middle class until he's making the middle class you determination know, of money. Like like the the Hewlett Packard guys. They used to have meetings in a in a garage, and uh, mm -hmm. they used to write on napkins at a yeah. coffee shop. You know, yeah. with their ideas and. Picasso used to pay for a meal with a uh, design on him and that kid. They, they're looking for uh, uh, venture capital, seed. That's when they have to go on their knees and, to a and, bank. And get a Wall Street. And go on their knees, drop to their knees and receive the seed to get seed money. Yes. the seed money, if you know what I mean. All right? Yeah. All right. Get it? Got it. All right, now let us sink our teeth back into these readings for the balance of this wonderful, wonderful Labor Day enlightening, weekend. Enlightening. Enlightening, invigorating Labor Day weekend. Invigorating. Labor Day weekend 2014 show. For decades, evangelical leaders oh, gosh. have touted virginity pledges as a way for teens and young adults to save themselves from marriage. Oh God, that's stupid. Very unrealistic. It's not going to work. But what happens after the wedding day? According to a researcher at University of Washington, uh. young adult men who took the pledge and had male friends who held them accountable before marriage find themselves suddenly adrift. Yeah, sure. And unable to talk to trusted friends. Sure, they're celibate before marriage. And sure. sometimes even their wives about sex. Well, women, it's funny, you know, once they're married, uh, they they look at their their wives like uh, with some kind of Virgin Mary syndrome. Is that the Madonna whore syndrome? Yeah, uh, um, you know, uh, my my my. A good friend of mine uh, said something very humorous to me. Uh, you know what the um, the best um, the best form of um, he didn't say birth control. Um, you know what eliminates a, a a woman's sex drive better than anything else when she eating wedding cake. Wedding cake. Because these men understand sex as a gift for the marriage bed, it is unthinkable to discuss sexual activity anywhere outside 
of their married relationship. Well, you should respect your spouse by, you know, keeping that part of your life home. That's true. <clears throat> Sarah Diefendorf wrote in a paper presented last week at the American Sociological Association Convention in, in San Francisco. Positive conversations around sex do not occur, she said. Diefendorf is a doctoral student in sociology. She interviewed 15 young evangelical Christian men in southwestern megachurch in 2008. Oh boy, the megachurches. And followed up with them in 2011. You can imagine what's going through my mind. The when mega churches. All but one had married. They're so worried about celibacy. I wonder how much money the me the mega church donates to help the poor and the homeless. The so men had a clear demarcation in their views about sex before and after marriage. While sex within marriage is sacred. <laughs> Sex before marriage is a beast that must be controlled. Sacred? Yeah, but marriage is, marriage itself only goes back like, uh, what did you say, a few hundred years? Mm, what several, do you mean, for the church hundred? to sanctify it? Yeah, I mean the existence... Marriage has existed since the Garden of Eden. Okay, I mean Under the, God. the ceremonial, legal aspect yeah. of it. The church got involved somewhere around, I don't know. S several hundred years ago. 15, 2000, who knows. Yeah. But before that, there were what you call espousals. Mm -hmm. You espoused to your local people that you and she were going to get married. The bride paid a, the bride's family paid a dowry to the groom's family often. Yes. You know, maybe livestock. The form of livestock, since everybody owned their own land and 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 created their own food back and then, and of course livestock was counted as wealth. Yeah, in those days, right? Like like the uh, uh, the founding fathers of the United States, uh, they used the real estate as a symbol of wealth. Yeah, the plantation owner land. But uh, Devendorf found that what were considered beastly temptations mm -hmm. beastly, yeah. pornography sex outside of marriage did Wait. not disapprove after the wedding ceremony oh you're talking about these open marriages these uh, 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 uh evangelicals with open marriages well, you Where are you coming from, Mr. Jupiter? You just said, you just said before, what, what the she... The problem here is, Jupiter. these young men, when they were single, they did not want to talk about sex. Let's talk about outside sex, of marriage. baby. Let's they did not want to do sex me. You know, outside salt and pepper, of marriage. Salt and pepper, let's talk about all the now, things. Now when they got married, they still have those difficulties. Oh, so they, it certainly has nothing to do with an they're, open they're marriage. A bunch of clumsy clods, inexperienced, and remaining so. Oh, because their families really kept them strict. Maybe, maybe that poor soul, uh, uh, Marie Osmond's son, the gay son that committed suicide. Maybe he was pressured. And uh, into doing that by a strict right-wing zealot, uh, a Mormon family that did not accept him. It all depends on where you are, what your milu is, your environment. Yeah. The men were uncomfortable speaking with each other about the intimate details of their married life. In part because they were now talking about their wives as well as themselves. Marty King, spokesman for Lifeway Christian Resources, said 
an estimated 3 million students in thousands of churches worldwide have made the True Love Waits pledge. In one of the most popular campaigns for sexual purity. Purity? Purity. Purity. South Carolina evangelist Clayton King said he is not surprised by Diefendorf's findings. I think there's been a big emphasis on accountability prior to marriage and then an assumption that once you get married, you're just going to figure it out. You know what? People, animals and humans have been figuring it out since the beginning of time. It's going to be easy. And all sexual temptation will just go away. Yeah, sure. And that has been the case for most of the men that I know. Listen, I'll tell you how they figure it out. Let's say the couple doesn't know diddly dick about yeah, sex, yeah, yeah. no sex education. They embrace, they're affectionate with each other. They realize that they feel arousal in their crotch. The man gets an erection, the female gets wet. The more they embrace, the, the wetter and harder they both get. And eventually, they realize that the hardness just slides right into the wetness and uh, based on the fact that it feels great to go in and out that's it bingo dogs do it well, that's what i'm saying mammals have done it for hundreds of thousands of years and humans are homo sapiens they're mammals and it, you 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 just you know you just wing it you play it by ear if it feels good you do it the more you, the, I guess they felt the more they go in and out faster and faster, the better it felt. And then all of a sudden, <coughs> the scum guppies went flying, and they, it resulted in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a baby. However, throughout and, time. And that, that's, how, that's how they figure it out. Throughout time. Like that. Uh, that figuring it out has led to males. Uh, pleasuring themselves uh, and females not being orgasmic. Oh, uh -huh. oh, like the movie, the old movie Quest for Fire, when the woman is is washing her animal skin or whatever in in, in the creek, and then the the male rushes up behind her and doggy styles her, <laughs> and then walks away. In other words, uh, wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Ma well, there was no thank you, ma'am, back then. Not yeah. from the uh, the one being doggy. Not not from Cro Magnon or <laughs> Neanderthal, but yeah, right. Well, it's not that then. I mean, this is only recent. Yeah. That women have uh, gratification fought for the right to uh, to have orgasms. Right. You know, this goes well, back, women, baby. Women were second class citizens for a long that. time. Can you imagine how many women? actually are orgasmic in let's say Arab countries well are they allowed to be orgasmic with their spouses indoors I would think not I don't know okay I would think not a hey, woman women couldn't vote in the United States until the until the what the 1920s 1920 Ninth, uh, check your uh, Check your constitution, I believe it's the 19th Amendment. They called it suffrage back then? Yes, they did. And then that was before the right wings came up with that brilliant, wonderful idea called prohibition. It was about the same time. And, my friend, mm -hmm. it was a lot of women who were behind that. Yeah, because men because were the, coming home stinking drunk from the saloon. Right. From the saloon. Hey, I mean, where the bottle of, leave the bottle of whiskey. Nah. They'd get paid on Friday and then they you know you wouldn't see them. You want they a, check gone. You want a drink? You want a shot of whiskey? Leave the bottle. There you go. And the men would come home stinking drunk. And they play poker and they lose their money. By the way, before I forget, right. we we're speaking of whiskey. Speaking of a animals and yeah. sex and the internet. Yeah. Uh on the internet, 
you can see some dogs doing human females, and they certainly know what to do there, even. Well, they, they only know how to do it the best way they can. They yeah. do it doggy style. But they get it in there, and they pump away. They pump away, yeah. And they have their, uh, you know, uh, that's emission. A, that's another bizarre talk show, Bestiology. Besti Ooh, bestiality, yes. Bestiality. Could you imagine, could you imagine a woman getting paid a lot of money for participating in that and then later on in life try to try to get into a normal straight-laced career or, or politics you imagine how that would bite her on the ass uh, no pun intended you all, all you have to do is read uh, uh, deep, uh, what was her name deep throat um, um, Jesus, I forgot her oh, name. What the hell? Uh, uh, Linda Lovelace? Linda Lovelace. That's what exactly happened. She <coughs> she did an 8 millimeter with a dog. Oh, shit. And later on, when it came back to bite her in the ass, she claimed it was a puppet. <laughs> did it look, but like, yeah, that did it look did, like a puppet? No, it did not. And it didn't move like no stinking puppet either. <laughs> But oh point, man. But the point is, yes, oh, that, that stuff does happen. And I'm sure a lot of those ladies regret what they did oh, Tracy, in those days. Tracy Lords, uh, she was a minor when she was a star, and the, and the guys that were banging her didn't even know she was a minor. And she tried to later on yeah. break into serious during, straight acting. During the 1970s, yeah. <laughs> there was a move. Right. to try to legitimize porn. They had people could, who could act. They had stories, etc. But it didn't work because there is this thing in America. There is this thing that if you are associated in any way, shape, or form with sex, the top bananas and coconuts in the trees are not available to you. It doesn't matter how much money you make. You're not taking. I take the the life of Mr. Larry Flint. Well, it could be now. Ron, there's a man. It could be Ron Jeremy. It could be any of them. Or Ron Jeremy. They don't take you seriously. Exactly. The 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 powers that be, the standards, the establishment, whatever you want to call it, do not will never take you seriously, even if you try to be serious. Even if you are. Even if you're capable. That's what I'm saying. A lot of those movies back then were decent. The only problem right. was they had sex in them. You're typecast. That like too. a like a horror movie actress. That too. Like um it, you, you come um, at it from many, many uh, Karen Black, avenues. Linda Blair, uh, um, uh, even the old horror movie greats, your Boris Karloff, Boris your Carlos Peter Laurie, uh, Lon Chaney Jr., yeah. Bella Lugosi, you know, yeah. you were typecast. Yeah. And the same thing with the adult entertainment industry. You are typecast. Yeah, but that's You're, only looking at it from one Jenna Jameson, point of view. Yeah, yeah. Well, my point of view was that there is this thing in America wherein if you are associated in any way, shape, or form with sex, you will never be able to grab that high coconut up there. Whatever in, that is. In mainstream is. society. Correct. In, yeah, in the uh, avenues of, uh, let's say, porn and etc., yeah, you can be a big star. But try to cross over, and it ain't going to happen. And it never did. Never did. Honestly, it never did. It never did for I, anybody. I mean, we're, we're talking it. about the adult industry. Yeah. Now, even with in the straight-laced world of entertainment, the late great Robin Williams, uh, 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 well established as a as a comedian, did cross over and do serious drama, and he did it very well. But that's a yeah, rare. Yeah. That was a very rare occasion that that happened. The uh, Dead Poet Society was a good movie. No, he did. He did a substantial amount of drama that was done very well. And uh, but that's rare in terms of you know once you get typecast. But the adult industry, <laughs> once you go adult, you might as well park your ass there because. Or you better have plastic surgery. Or something. You better yeah, look like another person <laughs> exactly. under another name. But that's how it is, you know? Yeah. Um, um, let me check.
time. Uh, we got maybe time for one, one more. All right, we'll do a little uh, ask Amy. Okay. Oh, so we'll see if we can solve this problem for this person. Let's let's do it before you read Amy's opinion. What? In other words, let's see if Amy's solution matches ours. Oh, okay. I thought you were putting Amy before the even the problem. No, 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 no. I am a bisexual woman. Okay. I have a date coming up soon with James. Aha! Not me. It ain't me, I tell you. Hey, wait a minute. You gonna refuse a date? Maybe with a tranny? She's bisexual or a tranny? Well, not this particular person. I'm saying a tranny. Suppose you didn't know that the chick was a tranny. But she you mean, was hot. You mean she, hot, had, hot, she hot. had me really, really fooled. Yeah, reeled up, baby. Well, if she had me fooled that much, I guess I would be, I would end up being in sh very surprised, very shocked. But you'd be fooled. on the date. But at that time, I would, <laughs> I would be already beyond the date, yeah. and it would, you know. Yeah. But I'm, but uh, this girl, uh, uh, woman, uh, has to be. Uh, if I don't feel chemistry, I, I can't. Uh, you know. Well, you'll be feeling something, believe me. Be intimate with somebody unless they're I feel unless they're my type. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she was uh, coming up upcoming date with James, a guy I'm very interested in dating. Okay. I am out of the closet to only a few of my closest friends. Not even my family knows yet because it's all still very new to me. She's 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 a dick curious. She's she's a straight curious. Oh, she's bisexual. She 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 dates both. Okay. And it's a personal topic. Okay. But I'm wondering, is it right, the right thing to do to to tell James that I am bi, in case this affects his opinion of me? Yeah, I think you have to come clean at the beginning. And what he potentially wants in a relationship. Now, if she says she's bi, he might switch the uh, the steady girlfriend relationship mode off and look at her as a, a female friend slash with benefits. Yeah, he may be like a friend of mine who uh, would bring the second girl into the bedroom. He's going to think threesome. There you go. He's got Bingo. The, this man is going to think threesome. That's the first thing that's going to pop into his head. The relationship and the romance part is going, going to shut off in his mind and the word potential threesome and maybe foursome and maybe harem is going to pop in his mind. If I do tell him, yeah. should I do so before our first date? Or should I wait to see if our relationship progresses? Mm -hmm. before disclosing this to him. Um, I would feel like I was lying if I was keeping this from him, but it's also something still very sensitive to me. Well, she better uh, come clean because he's going to find out sooner or later. You know? I don't think she should say anything. Well, it's only a first date. Oh, oh, all right, okay. You know, but what I mean is, the uh, hell, it's not. It, she, the guy don't need to know her whole uh, no, personal history. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. But what I'm saying is, if the it's to other dates, yeah. Before any romantic feeling should arise, I think it should be known that she's bi, yeah. bisexual. But that doesn't mean, you know, being bi certainly does not mean that you can't have a, uh, a, a, a straight relationship. relationship with a straight person. And with a man, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right, you're right. It just means, it just means you're bisexual, but, but to, a, to a man, it means that this woman will always have an attraction also to females. Right. And when a man thinks of menage a trois and things of that nature and threesomes and foursomes, the relationship aspect of his thinking shuts off. Because, you know, unless it's one of those dudes 
that wants a so-called open, serious well, relationship. You know, that's, that's another thing. Um, in a lot of people's minds, when they're thinking, when they're thinking by and things of that nature, they're really only thinking in sexual terms, not in a relationship term. You yeah. know, there is a if you're difference. You're involved. You don't want your your. When Mr. Clinton was with Monica, getting a blowjob. What they say. This was not considered having a relationship. This is what is, they say. She was only given a blowjob. Well, he also stuck a cigar up her cunt. Okay. This is what Thank they you. say. They probably bang like two friggin' machines, for all we know. Well, for all we know. But the point is that a lot of people do not do not regard a hand job, uh, 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 fellatio, uh, or these. Anything that is not uh, intromission, penetration, yeah. penetration, non-penetrated, is not considered a relationship. It's not considered. According to Bill Clinton, it wasn't considered cheating. But, but well, tell, that's what I'm saying. But tell that to Hillary. Try to convince her of that. That's what I'm saying. See, you know? they don't. Uh, they don't regard that as stuff like that. <laughs> they don't regard it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I don't think anybody wants their significant other. To be having sex with other people, most most people basically do yeah. not would not accept that unless it's somebody who's one of those swingers or open marriage individuals. Well, you know, uh, as I wrote in my book, uh, sexuality a holistic approach. Yes. No matter how they sell it, no matter how they say it, no matter how they present it. Promiscuity does one thing and one thing only. Get you off. I no. mean, get you in trouble. Well, I don't know if you're going to you, you call it trouble. Well, what it does is it takes the focus off the one person that you were focused on. Yes. And it splits it. Yeah. So therefore, you no longer have the ability of focusing fully on that one person. It's like glorified. That's what it does. It's like glorified masturbation. Well, I guess it you know can be you know done that later on. But what I'm saying well, is, well, there's if no you, close. If you want to love somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> then you can't split that focus. No, the focus meaning like getting closer emotionally yes. to the other person. Yes. When you're doing when you're involved in a fling, you're talking about a fling liaison. Uh, you know, well, anything that involves the other two person. ships passing in the night. You know, in the same way that you are involved yeah. with the first person. Yes. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah. Sex with the relationship, in the sex in a relationship that's serious versus sex that is just for the sake of having sex. Somebody who you have chemistry with physically, but not there's no emotional connection because you're splitting. What if fo there's the focus? What if you're able to? Uh, 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 put the same amount of emotional into the two of them, but it's still not as much as you would be able to put into one. Well, that is my point. Let's take a Middle Eastern man that has a harem. Exactly. I mean, he, he must have to he must have to uh, form some kind of schedule with his wives. You know, I mean, uh, this one on but Monday. But if he has seven hundred wives, let's say he's got well, his love focus. Is split in seven hundred. No, they're they're not allowed to have seven hundred. King David did. Unless you're a king. He has seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. Besides, yeah. wait a minute. With seven hundred wives, King David needed three hundred concubines. Three hundred concubines. That's correct. He had that that much time on his hands. Well, it wasn't a matter of time. At that time, again, it's like the animal. It's a matter of wealth. Oh, it's the fact that he could have it. That's correct. That he can have it. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I was going to say, if you got 700 wives, <laughs> I don't see much time and energy, you know, available for concubines. No, because if you have... 300 concubines. If you have them one a day, one a day... One a day, I think... You, you, you'd have to have two years for the first 700. I think you would have to split them within the hour. 
every hour? Oh, yeah. Oh, come on in. King David ain't going to be able to do that. Yeah, oh, you, you, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. You get up and go to the bathroom. You say, hey, concubine, uh, I'm a rich, I'm a rich uh, king. Uh, aim it for me. And then it turns into sex. Then you go, you go in the You'll kitchen and you have in breakfast. Air after the first two or three times. Come on. He, he, he. Look, Jeez. back then you didn't have nutritional supplementation, but let me tell really? you, you would need quite a bit. We'd have to talk to Peter North. Yeah. Okay. Peter, Peter North. Is he still with us, Peter? Yes, North? he is. Oh, okay, good. In fact, he's got his own company now. Oh, like like Ron Jeremy, he, he and, started his own company. And Eric, uh, what you call it? And he, yeah, they all have their own company. Uh, uh, Paul Thomas, they all have their own companies now. I'm not even familiar with that name, Paul Thomas. Oh, he was a good actor. I remember Harry Reams. Reams was good too. Uh, S Silvera, Silvera, what's his name? Uh, Joey Silvera. Joey, I think it was. Yeah. Silvera. Uh, um, 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 anyway, but anyway, a lot of the women were good too. The and legends. That, and that Haven. Uh, Nina Hartley. Hartman. Nina Hartley. Nina. A lot of them were good actresses, also. Seika. <laughs> I don't know about her. Uh, Candy Samples <laughs> was very stupid. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, she played stupid. Uh, 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 what about Vanessa Del Rio? Uh, she, she was, was okay because she was in a lot of crap. Vanessa Del Rio time. and uh, um, a favorite of mine, uh, Ona Z. Ona Z. Ona Z. Amy's answer. Now we're waiting for Amy's answer. If not disclosing something makes you feel like a liar, then disclose it. However, because you asked about timing, in my opinion, there is no need to disclose this until you are in a relationship. Uh, See my point? I disagree with her. So you're gonna wait. She's gonna wait until feelings are established. Deep feelings are established before the the girl, the woman, oh, lowers the boom on the man by saying she's bisexual. Why wait that long when there's feelings of love present? Because that is going to make the hurt or the disappointment even worse. Maybe, maybe not. I'm sorry, Amy. I. Uh, I have to disagree. Do not wait for the serious feelings to take effect. With someone you would like to be sexual with. Think of it this way. Well, if you want to be sexual with them, yeah. You might find it oversharing or off-putting if James <laughs> talked about his sexual history before you had even been out on a date. That would, that would take the wind out of their sails. You know, if he would disclose everything at first. But what do you say to a woman when she... Women always say, well, tell me about yourself. Ooh. Tell me more about yourself. What are, you, what are you supposed to say? Keep it brief? Amy says she sees this... Show her your underwear. As a third, Keep it brief. Get it? As a third date conversation. A third date conversation. Disclose it around the third date. Well, get acquainted first. Correct. And see if you get along. See if Thank you have you. see if you have the same things in common with each other. And then and hold off. But yeah. don't wait until, you know, there's feelings of Well, of by the love. third date, you're not going to be uh no. what they do in love. No, there's not going to be love, no. You know? If, if if you think it's love, it won't be. It'll be lust. Oh. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with lust. For those that um, <laughs> are into a lustful life. Lusting. Like um, Hugh Hefner. Brother Hefner. I wouldn't put the sexual onus on Mr. Hefner and people like that. I believe that is all PR. They are not as sexual as you might think. In other words, he's a, he's a very shrewd businessman. It's like a lot of the women in porn. When they are at home, on the street, etc., and you come to them, and you approach them, 
and you want to speak about sex, they may not be interested. You see, because we have this, if we look at a lot of porn and stuff like that, and we see like uh, certain chicks doing this porn and all that sort of stuff, and we think, man, wow, that's their lives. Oh, they are hot. They are hot, hot, hot. Yeah, all the time hot, yeah. But I got news for you. 90% or more of all those chicks in all of our porn ain't having orgasm. So what does that tell you? Acting, act, very good actresses. Very good. Actresses, and and using a lot of lube. And all, and the porn, the ninety percent of porn or whatever, is geared to the male's masturbation fantasy. They're not. They're not like. Um, there's no romance involved. Well, even in the in romance. the in the video. Even without romance. There's nothing that there's would no, appeal. There's to no women. It's one-sided. It's one-sided. That's the med. Isn't that the same that goes for sexy lingerie and, and all these uh, uh, crotchless panties and all these uh, these toys of, uh, you know, like a lot of them are geared to turn men on and not comfortable at all for the women to wear. You know, the tong and this and that and the other thing. The because lace. unfortunately, like I say, 90 or so percent of our porn is geared to the male. Now, people like uh, uh, Candida Royale right. and some others, uh, they have tried to make feminine friendly porn. They didn't sell that well. It doesn't succeed. Because men buy spend the most money on and they ain't gonna buy that crap. on the adult it's entertainment like industry men. I ain't going to no chick flick I refuse to look at no damn chick flick you're right so but so the the, 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 the clientele the main source of profit for the adult entertainment industry including porn is men so if you make a woman friendly adult video it's not gonna sell you're right you're damn right because nope. They, the chick flick would turn them right off if they added the romance to it. And, and, and women have to put that in their mind, you know. They can't expect a man to react the same way as they do. It's like if, if you walk up to a person who owns a Dairy Queen franchise and you start asking them questions and talking about ice cream in a very excited, enthusiastic way. Oh, wow, I must be fantastic working around that stuff. Banana splits, ice cream sundaes, you know, blizzard and this and, and milk and malt. Is, uh, and they're like, the guy's yeah, bored. so what? Who cares? I'm, <laughs> all right, and what's your point? Yeah. You know, he's bored. He's bored. It's like if, if you're around it, you know, it's like when I worked with seafood for 10 years way back when, many moons ago, people used to say, Oh, it must be fantastic being around all this fish and the scallops and the lobsters and the, the, and the flounder. And I'm like, eh. I'm not even thinking of the seafood. I'm thinking of the asshole pricks I had to work for, the scumbag supervisors I had. I, I, I was, you know, I was under stress. It, after a while, the seafood doesn't, you know, doesn't mesmerize you anymore. And that was, a, <clears throat> that was a time when flounder was 298 a pound yeah your income did not flounder back then and you want if you wanted to buy flounder but yeah it's everything was reasonable yeah. and uh life was less complicated and that's that you know uh same thing goes for the uh the porn actresses and actors it becomes an acting job a not job. a fun-filled romp. That's correct. A job. A job. That's right. Yeah, but anyway, that's it. That wraps it up. That's a wrap. <laughs> as, yeah. as a movie director would say, right? That's a wrap. And that's a, uh, is that a, uh, a Spanish name, a wrap? Uh, oh, you mean the, yeah. the large flour tortilla yeah, yeah, that yeah. you roll, you make a sandwich on, you yeah, roll? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that yeah. Spanish or uh, what? Yeah, it came from the tortilla. It came oh, okay. from the tortilla, not the Spaniard. It came from the Indians of uh, Mesoamerica. 
the tortilla. And, and me, myself, and uh, William Morrow, we've spoke many times that we wish they started making the large wrap tortillas, not, not out of flour, out of corn. Like the corn tortillas, corn. the to corn tortillas are tasty as all hell, but they're small. Yes, yes, I'm afraid that uh, we have to think of that now, GMO corn. So, so if you go into the supermarket and you buy Jolly Time popcorn, yeah. or you get a, uh, you want to buy flour and make your own tortillas, or you get Hominy grits by Quaker, there's a good chance that that is GMO corn. What about the Jolly Green Giant frozen corn kernels? GMO corn? This is what you got to worry about. Yep. Oh well, thank you for joining us. One problem at a time. Have a safe and fun-filled, but mostly safe Labor Day weekend. And uh, I'm sure the highways in New Jersey, the Guard State Parkway is bumper to bumper, or mm -hmm. was bumper to bumper, but I'm not gonna be in it because I learned my lesson years ago. We're no fools. Say so long to these jabronis. So long, jabronis. That's right. The, the wonderful rip-off Jersey Shore beaches will have no lifeguards, Ooh. and they, they, will be, they won't be able to rip people off with cover charges and what have you, because after Labor Day weekend, they close. Ah! Uh. Not the boardwalk, but, you know, the beaches. What a scam. What a racket. This has been a Megalife 21 production.